In this video, I'm going to be trying a supplement that gets reviews like these. Hi, my name is Nathan Aubrey and I have been deep into my training for the past 13 years. I've learned a lot on the way and I am very familiar with the world of supplements and trying to get the most out of my performance. In this video, I'm going to show you my experiences over the next 30 days of trying this supplement sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate works as a buffer against the buildup of acid in your muscles. As lactic acid accumulates during high intensity exercise, it releases hydrogen ions, which creates a more acidic environment in the muscles, which then creates problems around energy production and muscle contraction. Sodium bicarbonate then creates a more alkaline environment. So between the two of them, it should balance out the pH. By doing this, I should be able to sustain higher intensity efforts for longer periods. The positive effects have always been well documented, but they've always come with a slight issue that Morton claimed to have solved. When sodium bicarb comes in contact with an acid, it does this. This reaction results in a lot of gas being produced, which is fine in some parts of the body but in the stomach it is not causing a lot of wind for the person taking it. The Morton Hydrogel is meant to protect the sodium bicarb from coming into contact with the stomach acid and for my sake I hope it really does. With the effects supposed to be helping me with my higher intensity efforts I don't see any point in me taking this when I'm doing my longer slower bikes or ride. So I'll solely be taking this supplement on the days where I do my higher intensity interval sessions and then for one final ramp test at the end of the 30 days to see if this supplement can help me improve my FTP score. So this is everything you get for the bicarb system. So the idea is now to set this up to take it. So this, we fill it with water. This then goes in there. We shake it about, leave it for five minutes. Yeah, in five minutes. So this is then the hydrogel, I think, what comes of it. And then to finish, after the five minutes, you put the bicarb in it, which I think this is, all the little bits of bicarb, that goes in there, you stir it around, and then you take it. Tastes worse to be fair, but it's not actually that bad. It's just a weird consistency. You want to chew it, uh, but you can't. So I gotta get my way through all of this, and then I'll get to training. So I just finished the first session uh, after taking bicarb, so it was interval session. I did a 15 minute warm up into three 10 minute intervals at around 100% of your FTP. Um, with a 10 minutes of easy spin between every interval. Session was hard. Um, first interval, my legs felt really heavy, um, which I didn't really expect, but I held between 300 and 310 watts per interval, which is quite hard for me for a bit of concept. My best 20 minute FTP score is around 293. Um, so for me, that's quite high. I didn't really expect to hold that for the whole three sets, especially after the first one. But my legs felt a lot better as I went until sort of Obviously the last like five minutes of the last set, um, but that's sort of expected. Stomach felt all right, which is the main thing, <laughs> taking this for me. Did feel a bit heavy towards the end, like there was something gonna come up, but I don't know whether that was just because the intervals uh, or the supplement. So I'll see how the other intervals go in the coming weeks. And then hopefully I'll do a decent ramp test for you at the end. So I've now done three weeks doing interval sessions using sodium bicarbonate. I felt really good and I've probably done all my intervals at about 5 to 10 watts higher than what I expected to do. It's all been a good me saying I feel good but we haven't really got any data to show any improvements to give us any solid evidence. So today I'm going to be doing a ramp test on the bike. Uh, about two months ago I did another ramp test at the end of testing another supplement so I got a good baseline to go off. So what a ramp test is, is you do a hundred watts on the bike for a minute and then on the next minute it increases by 20 watts. So it goes up to 120 watts, you hold that for a minute, then the next minute it goes up by 20 watts again. So you keep doing this basically until you can't go any further. From that then you can work out what around your FTP is going to be. So last time on my baseline test I did, I got to the end of the 420 watt minute. I didn't do anything in the 440 watt minute and that then gave me an FTP of 312 watts. So let's see what we can do this time. So 
So I just finished the ramp test. Didn't go to plan, really. Um, I didn't get that good of results. The FTP, my, I've spent my FTP at 293, which is like 20 watts lower than what I had previously, like five, four, five weeks ago. And I feel like I've improved even on my aerobic sessions, which I do every week. My watts have gone up at the same heart rate. So I know I've improved in some sense. Um, may not be in the same sense as doing this test, but there's no way there's that much of a difference. The only difference is I did it on two different machines. So I did my first test on a watt bike when I did a VO2 max test, and then I used my own trainer, which I don't really think worked on the erg and the resistance. So it didn't let me spin quickly at the start to maintain like 100 and 120 watts. I basically didn't have to pedal to get there. And I did it at like 160 watts and I waited for the test to catch up with me because I couldn't get any lower um, without shifting down from the big cog on my bike. Um, so yeah, I don't think that, that test is any real good evidence in my FTP or sodium bicarb's effects. So essentially I need to scrap that test, but I will go back, have a look at all my data from my training now over the last month and see if I can see really any differences and any real improvements after taking the bike up. As I said, the ramp test didn't really give us any valid data. Looking back, I should have used the same machine what I'd done in the first ramp test, but after I'd done the last ramp test, I'm not gonna do another ramp test straight away. But what we can do, we can go and look back at all my training data over the last four weeks. I've been doing two different styles of interval sessions, and they're all based on the watts which I achieved on the ramp test six weeks ago, which was around three 312 watt, which by the way, I don't think I can actually hold for an hour. The first session was three sets of 10 minutes at 95% of my FTP, and then you did a 10 minute spin between each interval. So for me, I was aiming to hold 296 watts for the 10 minutes. The second session was an over under session. So it was nine minute intervals going two minutes and 90% of your FTP, and then one minute at 105% of your FTP. And then you repeated those three minutes three times for the nine minutes. You then did a 10 minute spin between each nine minute interval. And then you did three sets of those nine minutes. However, for these sessions, I then use heart rate numbers so I can see how many watts I could really achieve for these intervals. On the first session, where it was three sets of 10 minutes, I ended up averaging 306 watts on those 10 minutes, which was 10 minutes more than what I should have. And on the over under session for the two minute intervals, I was averaging 288 watts, which was eight watts more than what I should have. And for the one minute intervals, I was averaging 340 watts, which was 12 watts more than what I should have been holding. So the training all points towards really good results for the bike up. However, even before I'd done the ramp test, I had no intention of taking this supplement again. I've tried a lot of supplements in my time and this was by far the hardest one that I have ever taken. It took me around 10 minutes to eat every time and the consistency of it just made it really hard to stomach. By the end of the four weeks, I just had enough of it. I will give it its props. It did help me perform better. It didn't give me the shits. But for me, it was just way too much hassle to take. If I was looking for something which gave me similar results and was much easier to take, I'd go for this. 